I want to welcome on today's guest, Samantha LeDuc. Samantha has been a frequent guest on the show. I was really excited to bring her on this week during Fed Week. We have a lot to talk about. Samantha, it's great to see you and welcome back. It's great to be here, Dave. Thanks for the invite. Of course. So a lot of uh, talking, a lot of debating about what we should expect from the Fed this week. Help us make sense of what the market has been telling us leading up to this announcement. We're starting with the fixed income markets. What are you seeing here? A great opportunity to rotate into fixed income. But uh, before we get to that, this really is exciting because tomorrow the expectation that the, the Fed will hike by 75 basis points right now is being um, kind of front run with a potential 100 basis point hike. But I'm not seeing that. I definitely see the direction higher for longer. We have, every time we've talked, I have shown this chart of bonds, a 30 year, doesn't matter if it's 10, 5, 13 week, they just keep trending higher. And it's very much the, um, the now the mood of catching up to this rate hike regime, whether they talk about it or act on it. I definitely see, a, you know, this, this pace um, slowing in the future, but the direction is very clear. And just last year, you know, Goldman, they were, you know, the sentiment was, uh, by the Fed, they wouldn't raise until 2024. Now Goldman is out today saying they won't cut until 2024. So sentiment changed <laughs> quite considerably. Um, and I think the amount will be 75. The direction will be up unless we crash. And that's a distinct possibility um, later on uh, around midterms. But for right now, the duration is higher for longer. Mm, it's a really interesting chart. And again, this long-term chart is just a beautiful illustration of the trend in the uh, 30 year, your second chart is looking at the TLT. What does this tell us about the uh, the shorter term environment? So I have shown this 30 year bond price chart with you repeatedly over the past two years because I have been a huge inflationista and you know a rates bull and a dollar bull. These three macro trending trades have obviously continued. Um, now TLT I'm showing on a much smaller time frame, right? Which is I sent that to clients back in June saying 105 would be that short price target for a more sizable bounce if we get it. If we don't, all hell's going to break loose because stocks and bonds can sell off together. We've seen that where bonds have experienced their worst year in history. So this bounce level of 105 and TLT for a mini bond rally is important. Um, and I have played that before, so it, it has worked for a very, very short duration trade. But more importantly, it really needs to. So um, we have uh, basically a treasury rally, in my opinion, one way or the other um, after FOMC tomorrow for a short duration trade. But big picture, we are still in a heavy downtrend, as you can see from that 30-year bond price index, which is very much... Um, showing also in my indicators that we haven't even based in order to turn higher. So it's, a, it's, it's solid. And the other charts that I've shown when you've invited me on in this kind of macro bond uh, backdrop is very much focused on the rate of change. And last mm. time I actually spoke about how the rate of change in yields has been so incredibly sticky for the basically, you know, summer of 2020, that this is a longer duration trade. It's a momentum burst that can mm. last for a while. Not done. Yeah, it's such a great chart. And at the bottom, you have uh, Martin Pring's special K indicator. He actually just wrote an article earlier this week for Stock Charts members talking about the weakness in bonds and how much that's related to the weakness we're seeing in, in equities. I think, and, you know, mirroring very much the comments you made, Samantha. Now, talk us through the dollar, because I think, uh, you know, a lot of investors, particularly individual investors, understand the equity markets and, and ETFs to a degree, understand a little bit less about fixed income, but the dollar gets into this kind of murky, confusing area about what it means. What does it mean that the dollar has been moving up and where do you see things from here? That's the escape valve. So mm. equities are not safe. Bonds have not been safe. You know, forget Bitcoin and speculative risk assets. Valuations obviously have come down. They have more to come to go. And most importantly, emerging markets, when they have this rate differential where the rate hike regime is so strong, fast and furious, especially in the U.S., they sell U.S. treasuries and rotate into dollars. So mm. this has been a, a very strong long since we spoke last summer. And we have come up to a little inflection point at that 110 before, um, you know, it, it, usually they pause and digest before getting the energy to move higher. 
this is very indicative of risk off. Should dollar spike higher as yields have very much stayed sticky um, against the backdrop of sticky inflation? And the major, major reason is wage inflation. Energy started the game, food, um, housing, but as a result, all combined, its wage demand growth has been extremely strong, and that is the enemy of bonds. In fact, I wrote about that in October of 2021, the deflation of wages ended with COVID. So now wages are out per, outperforming productivity, which for decades had not been the case. And that is a, one of the major fundamental macro reasons for this continuation short in the bond trade. But having said that, we are at 105 TLT, which could very much indicate a bond, a mini bond rally. We are at 110 USD, which is, you know, in the Dixie, a pause area. But again, above that, it will be more pain and suffering for equities. That's a tough way to end the discussion, I'm Samantha, sorry. but really well done. And thanks for tying all that together. This is an area that I feel like a lot of investors have so much to learn. And as always, you've given us a little mini masterclass in how to make sense of this. Samantha LaDuke from LaDuke Trading, thanks as always for joining us. Thank you so much.